but we're in a three week pro uh, a three week series called the process, and I'm gonna jump right into it. Um, I'm gonna start by giving you the definition of process. The definition of process is the actions happening while something is happening or being done. The definition of process is the actions happening while something is something is happening or being done. A process is a procedure, something you do in order to achieve a certain result. So in the process, you're going through the actions while something is being prepared or being done. What do I mean? For example, in order to make this podium, the suppliers, the manufacturer, they had a picture in mind of how they wanted the podium to look. They had the podium. But in order to make the podium, they had to get screws, they had to weld, they had to do different things, go through the process to get the end result. So all the tools and stuff didn't look like the finished product because it had to go through a, through a process. So I'm sure somebody got their screws and maybe it was on an assembly line. They got the screws, somebody put one part together, the next person put another part together, and then the next person probably tried to put another part together, and maybe even the machine stopped working. See, that's how things are in the process. It's like you're, you're, you're putting things together to get to the end results. So the process is the actions happening while something is happening or being done. It is a procedure, something you do in order to achieve a certain result. And many times, we don't want to go through the process. We want the end result. God may say, um, I'm going to bless you with a house. I'm going to bless you with, with um, a better job. Or you may have an idea in your mind that, that you're going to go for the supervisor position. Or you're going to go and you want to start your business. Well, we all know that it does not happen overnight. But in our minds, we want the process to be eliminated and we have the finished product right then and there. We want the promise and then we want the manifestation of the promise. But in between the promise and the manifestation of the promise is a process that we must go through. You can't skip the process. You can't skip the middle part because if you do, you're not going to get the finished product is not going to look like how it's supposed to look. The promise is not going to look like how it's supposed to look. We like to, you know, we all go through it. We like to skip certain parts. We don't want to go through the sleepless nights. We don't want to go through a man not knowing how we're going to make ends meet. We don't want to go through trying to, you know, not, why, why do we have to try to figure it out? You know, why do I have to stay up all night long, you know, only if I knew how it was going to happen, only if I had the funds to make it happen. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm not going to go too deep in it because this is our first night of the series. And we got uh, two more Wednesdays on it. But if you would, turn with me to Isaiah 60 and 22. And we're talking about the process. Something that we all got to go through. We all got to go through the making. We all got to go through um, to be made. We all got to go through. When you get hired on the job, you got to go through orientation. Because you got to know the process. You got to know, amen, the procedures and applications that need to be um, done. Um, if you start a job, you got to know about safety. You got to know about the rules. You got HR is going to come in and talk to you. The safety team is going to come in and talk to you. You got to know all those things in, in between before you get that job. Because if you don't, then you're going to go in that job and you're not going to know what to do. And it works that way in the natural and in the spiritual. Amen. We have to go through what we need to go through to be and to get what God has promised us. Isaiah 16 and 22. Very simple, very simple. It says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. That's my key scripture, my only scripture for tonight. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. What is God saying in Isaiah 60 and 22? God is saying, don't try to figure out your life. 
because your life is in my hand. I've already preordained you. I've already known you. When you already, you know, when you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew who you were. I knew the calling that I had on your life. Your life is already mapped out. God already has mapped out our lives, and then he goes back to the beginning and places us in our mother's womb. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. And if we take that scripture and we meditate on it, it will eliminate sleepless nights. It will eliminate us trying to figure out every little move that God is trying to make in our life. He said when the time is right. Amen. He didn't say when the time is right for us. When the time is right for, you know, your spouse. He said, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. He's going to make it happen. He's going to do what needs to be done when the time is right. But, like I said, we don't want to go through the process. We want God, I need you to be, you know, on time right now. You know, I don't, you know, the old saying said, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. We don't want to wait. But there's blessings in the waiting. There's blessings in the process. When you in the you know in the middle of the process, sometimes we get confused because we're looking at things um, through one dimensional. We're one dimensional when we're looking at a situation. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna use again uh, something spiritual. If God said, "Okay, I'm gonna raise you up and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna use you mightily," He didn't tell you that you had to start from the bottom, cleaning out the toilet, sweeping the floors. Um, serving, doing what nobody else wants to do. He didn't tell you that part. He gave you, amen, A, I'm going to use you mightily. I'm going to raise you up. You're going to be a mighty man of God, a mighty woman of God. You know, you're going to have, you're going to go overseas and you're going to, you know, I'm going to, you're going to have business after business and land that you didn't, you know, you didn't buy. That's the end result. That's what he's telling you you're going to have. And you're here in the now and he's telling you something in the future. But he didn't say, you're going to lose your house before you almost lose your house, almost be homeless or be homeless. He didn't tell you that you're going to almost lose your mind. He didn't tell you that you was going to lose your marriage almost. And he didn't tell you you was going to be divorced. He didn't tell you that people are going to come against you and, and scandalize your name for no reason. He didn't tell you all that. Because nine times out of ten, if he told you the process of getting to where he wants you to be, we wouldn't do it. We give up. We say, God, this is too hard. I'm reminded, I was at a paint party last week, and the guy, he had this beautiful painting on the on the easel. And he was saying, This is what our picture is supposed our art is supposed to look like. And so he gave us the the, the, the tools that we need, the canvas, the, the paint, the brush, and he told us to start painting. Well, we didn't know what to do. Like some of us had never painted, so how are we gonna get? How are we gonna start with what we got, the tools that you've given us, and get the end result of this beautiful painting? So he would go around and give us some good tips and show us how to do stuff. And during the process of us trying to get our picture, our painting to look like he is, some of us got frustrated. So we had to come. We had to ask for help. Or can you come help me? Can you show me how did you do that? And then some people just started doing their own thing. And I believe that nobody painting really looked like his painting because during the process it got hard, it got difficult, we got frustrated, and we just started doing something. We started drawing different things. And he would come around every so often to try to help us. That's how the Holy Spirit does. In the process of him making you, as God making you, in the process of you going through whatever you have to go through to get to whatever you want to be or what you need in life and what you're going to be in life, Amen. Sometimes we have to ask God for help. God, help me through this process because things ain't looking like how you said it was going to look. Like you told me this was going to be. You told me I was going to get that house, but every lender I go to, they turn me down. I done did everything they done told me to do, and, and I'm getting frustrated. And then some of us, we just do what we want to do. We just get tired of waiting. We get tired of going through the process. We get tired of, of the ups and downs of life. We get tired of, 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 of seeing the promise. We're looking at the promise in our head, in our mind, and in the spirit, but nothing in our life says you're headed towards the promise. Nothing says you're headed towards being a multi-millionaire. Nothing says you're headed towards being an entrepreneur. Nothing is saying you're headed towards, amen, owning your own home. 
The money ain't adding up. And there's nothing adding up. When God is saying, wait when the time is right, if you just wait and be patient, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I, the Lord, will make it happen. Somebody right now probably struggling, pulling their hair out, wondering how, how this is going to happen. How is this going to happen? When God, he keeps telling us all throughout the Bible that for us not to work, that he got us. If he calls the millions in the fields, what more would he do for us? If he knows every follicle of hair on our head, he, he has our whole life mapped out. But it's during the process that we get weary. It's during the process when we can't comprehend, we get confused because we get our eyes off of the promise maker. I'm going to say that again. We get our eyes off of the promise maker and we start looking at us and what our money can buy and, and, and how many hours we got to work on our job and, and looking at our bank account and, and trying to figure it out and, and, and calculating and going to borrow here and going to borrow here and potting this and but God is saying, when the time is right, if you'll just follow me, if you'll just walk the way I'm telling you to walk, if you'll just trust me every step of the way, I'm going to make it happen for you. Even though, amen, during the process, amen, I can imagine them making an automobile. Sometimes the plant has to shut down due to unforeseen weather or, or due to some machines break down, um, due to, amen, mechanical failure or you know, anything, you you know, the, the people that's on the production line make it sick. And they have a deadline to get this car out. But something happened, and it was delayed. They're not only losing money, they're losing time. They're losing productivity. And that can be frustrating. frustrated. But if we understand that God does everything well, he does everything in his own time, and he knows what he's doing. So we can't afford to look at the process. We can't afford to look at our promise one way, one dimensional. We got to look at it three dimensional because the promise is three dimensional. It's what God said, and that's over there. It's the process, and that's in the middle. And then it's the end result. I mean, the beginning um, of what he said. That's three dimensional. We have to understand that nothing happens overnight. You know, there's a saying that says, if it's, if, if it's, um, if it's fast, it won't last. But if, it, if it's, you build it for, if you're slow about building or slow about getting off the ground, it's going to last. I mean, it's going to be for sure. I'm, I'm messing it up. But if it's slow, it's for sure. If it's fast, it won't last. It's just a little cliche. But it makes sense because God is not a one-hit wonder. He's not, now, he can work a miracle and skip time and skip the process. But most of the time during the process God is trying to get us to see something. If he tells you you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to own several businesses. If he made you an entrepreneur right now where's your funds coming from? Do you know anything about running a business? Do you know anything about um, managing employees? Do you know um, do you have your vendors in place? If he made you what he said he wanted you to be right now, you don't have the wisdom, the patience, the knowledge, the funds. You don't have anything that happens during the process that you're going to gain. You don't have any of that. So you're in a position, it will be like he's setting you up to fail. Because he's giving you what he said you're supposed to have, but you don't have nothing, no, nothing to sustain you. So that's what the process is about. He's giving you the tools that you need, little by little, step by step, procedure by procedure, to when you get to that finished thing, when you get to what he said you would be, when you get the house, when you get the car, when you get the husband, you're going to already know how to treat that man. You're going to already know, amen, how, how to, to deal with paying your bills. And, and, you know, if you're having problems now paying your bills in an apartment, and God said, I'm going to bless you with, um, to stay in, I'm going to use Elm Lake, because that's a big place, you know, nice houses. If you can't budget your money on an apartment, in an apartment, when you get to Elm Lake, how are you going to budget your money then? That's good. How are you going to be able to survive if you can't pay 
And I'm just going to use, and I know sometimes we all struggle, but I'm just saying, during the process of getting to L.A., God's going to teach you. He's going to show you, okay, I want you to go take some budgeting classes. I want you to uh, stop spending so much. I want you to open up a bank account. You're learning the tools you need to when you get to paying a $2,000 mortgage. You can pay it. But if you can't pay a seven or $800 rent, then how are you going to go and pay a $2,000 mortgage if he blesses you with that overnight? So what am I saying? The process is needed. Nobody wants to go through it, but it's needed for you to get to where you need to be. Glory to God. I pray that y'all get something out of this because the Lord wants us to not, amen, despise the process. Don't give up doing the process. Don't give up when it seems like things are not going the way that you think it should go. Amen. While you're waiting, when God speaks the promise and you're waiting on the manifestation, you got to endure the process. You got to endure. Amen. Endure the hardship of getting where you need to be. Sometimes it's really simple. You just got to get some discipline. You got to discipline yourself. If you really want the promise. And I'm going to give you some things, amen, that God began to speak to me, amen, to tell the people tonight about going through the process. Going through the process, amen, from the, from the promise to the manifestation. Manifestation sounds good, don't it? Mm. Manifestation means, okay. I, how many of you are still waiting on things that God has promised you? Amen. That you know God has said. And you're still waiting on it. And while you're waiting, you say, well, that ain't came to pass yet. That, 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 that's not going to happen. I mean, I've been waiting for years. And do you see what you're doing? You're starting to speak against the promise. So while you're speaking against the promise, amen, the manifestation seems further and further away because you're not we know that what we say out of our mouths, amen, sometimes we get in trouble because we speak the opposite of what God has already said we're going to have. So our mouth begins to get us in trouble. The tongue, the power of the tongue, amen, begins to get us in trouble when we don't speak in what the word of God says or we don't speak what God has promised us. So sometimes that will delay. That's a part of your process, learning how to tame your tongue, learning how what not to say. That's all a part of your process. God, amen, he began to give me this. And if you're taking notes or if y'all are writing down, I need y'all to write this down. Because this is one of the things or a couple of things that God says that his people need to understand. Amen. It's not that God, is a, it's not that God does not want to do it. It's not that God is not going to do it. Amen. But it's that there's a, there's a process. It takes patience. It takes patience. We are a generation that just want things right here and there. Microwave. Pop it up. I want it now. If he said it, I need it right now. I don't want to wait. I, I should be having it now. And in a way, it's like an a, a, a act of entitlement. We think we're entitled. Amen. But when God is saying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to teach you something very valuable so you can be able to conquer or you can be able to maintain that promise, that manifestation. Amen. God said he has to realign our minds during the process. He has to realign our minds because if we go into if, if we go into the promise, some of us with the same mind frame we had when God first promised it to us, we're going to mess up something. It's during the process that God realigns your thinking. Your thought pattern has to change during the process. So he has to realign your mind. He has to realign your speech. He has to realign your attitude. Because you get to where you need to go and your attitude still jacked up. You're going to abort what he has already, the manifestation of what he has promised you. So God has to do an inward work on us during the process. And that's why it's, it, it's so very important that we go through the process. Because we will mess up what God is trying to do. Your surroundings have to change through the process. The 
the process, in the process, as God begins to deal with your mind, he begins to deal with your attitude. He begins to deal with your speech. He begins to realign your thinking. Your surroundings have to change. Because if you're changing, your speech is changing, your actions are changing, amen, but you're still hanging around the same places that you used to hang around, that's not going to line up. So during the process, God will sometimes change your surroundings. He will place you in a new environment around new people. And don't get me wrong, I'm gonna give this disclaimer because I'm not no way telling you to cut people off or or you know stay away from family, stay away from friends, you know, because God, amen, he is for family, he is for you having friends, but sometimes somebody say sometimes, sometimes. he will have to rearrange your life to get you to the manifestation of a promise that he has already that he has promised you. You have to be careful what and who you entertain during the process. You got to be careful what you look at because we have gates. You got to be careful what your eye gate see, what your ear gate hear, and what your mind think, the gates of your mind. You have to protect that during the process because during the process, it's, you're going to go through some stuff. It's going to get bumpy. It's going to get hard. So you have to be careful. Who you allow in your circle, who you allow, amen, what you listen to, what you watch, amen, what you take in. Because you're trying to make it to the manifestation. And during the process, God is trying to teach you something. But if you're bucking and rebelling against, it's going to take it just like the children of Israel. It took them 40 years to get to the manifestation. And some of them, their children got there. Friends sometimes become associates or even enemies during the process. Family sometimes becomes an enemy during the process because they don't understand what you're going through. They don't understand why are you, you know, why, is, you know, they would think you're isolated when God is just saying, I'm taking you down a path that they're not going. I'm taking you a different way. So you can't entertain that. You can't do that. You're trying to make it somewhere. I, I spoke greatness over you. You know, that's not the path I want you to take. And sometimes people don't understand it, and we don't even understand it sometimes ourselves. Amen. So that's why you have to stay very prayerful during the process. You have to stay very um, vigilant and, and, and focused. You can't be distracted during the process. Amen. Because you're trying to get, if I'm trying to go, um, I'm going to use Tupelo. If I'm trying to get the Tupelo, and, and, and it's about to get dark, and I need to get the Tupelo before it gets dark. And I'm walking, you know, it could be people stopping on, you know, people calling my phone and, and saying this and that, or, you know, well, I'm not walking, I'm going to say driving. It could be hitchhikers along the way trying to stop me. I'm trying to get the Tupelo before it gets dark. I could have a flat tire. You know, anything could happen. So I have to stay focused on my surroundings, and, and I have to be diligent trying to get to where I'm trying to get to, because any delay... I could get caught in traffic. I could get a flat tire or somebody could try to, you know, while I'm trying to fix my tire, somebody could come and, and try to kidnap. Anything can happen during the process. So if you're not focused, if you're not prayerful, amen, if you're distracted, you're going to miss what God is trying to teach you along the way. Everybody does not understand your assignment. I'm going to say that again. Everyone does not understand your assignment. Therefore, they can't go along for the ride. And Bishop talk, uh, said something about that on Sunday. During your process, your process can be a lonely place. Jeez. It can feel like there's nobody in your corner. I can't depend on nobody. Because God wants you to take that path alone. He wants you, not that he wants you lonely or he don't want you connected to people, but he's trying to he's trying to pull some stuff off of you. He's trying to get rid of some stuff off of you. So when you get to your manifestation of the promise, you look like how he wants you to look. I'm going to use like preaching. A preacher has to go through like a metamorphosis stage. They have to go through the process. Amen. So that when they get to where God is taking them, they're not uh, pimping the people. They're not hurting the people. They're not speaking things that they shouldn't be speaking to the people. Amen. They've learned discipline. They've learned self-control. You know, they've learned the fruit of the spirit. They've learned all these things they need to learn so when they grab the mic, 
Amen. They can flow and it be God. You have to be mentally alert. Amen. I said that and focus going through the process because things will start happening that look totally opposite. Totally opposite. Totally. God, this is not what you said. You promised me this, God. And nothing has happened. You promised me that I would have a husband. I'd be married. And it seemed like everybody I date, they ain't no good. They, they do this and that. I mean, you promised me that I would have kids. And, and here I am. You know, I can say for myself, I'm 49. I've been waiting on the promise. You know, but doing the waiting, I have said some things. I have, okay, I ain't even worried about it no more. Just forget it. But it's that process. I don't know what God is doing it. But I got to stay alert. I got to stay, my mind has to be prepared. You have to be prepared. People that have had miscarriages and they waiting on, on, on children, you got to have your mind got to be prepared for a uh, miscarriage after miscarriage. But God, you promised me. You get fired from a job. God said you're going to be the CEO, but you keep getting fired from jobs. It's a process. Because each job, you're learning something. Especially if it wasn't your father, you can't figure out why they keep firing me. God is taking you through the process of getting you where you need to be. Because guess what? When you're the CEO and when you're the boss, amen, you're going to know how to treat your employees. Amen. You're going to know, amen, you're learning something each place you go. you got to be disciplined. Your prayer life has to go to another level during the process. It's not a time to play. It's not a time to, to murmur and, and complain. But you got to go through the process with the right spirit. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I want y'all to meditate on that. I want y'all to think on that. Because when the time is right, I don't care what it is. Whatever God has promised you, he going to make it happen. When is your time? You don't want to go before your time. And you don't want to miss your time. You want to stay on track. And you want to trust God. That God, even though I don't understand what you're taking me through, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand why it seems totally opposite of what you're saying, God. I'm walking blind. I'm, I've got blind faith. I'm just following you, God, because I can't see. That's why you got to be careful what you watch. That's why you got to be careful what you hear. Because you can't afford to have the naysayers on your team during your process. You can't afford to have people that don't believe in you, amen, during your process. Because oh they'll have you veering off to the left when God is saying, I'm telling you to go right. Jesus. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. I'm not going to get too much more deep into this Ooh. because it's ways of a lot of more things that God is, is trying to get us to see during the process. Amen. James says that you got to let patience work its perfect. Give, give me that. Give me that. And that's going to be, I said I only had one. Give me James. I think it's one and six. It may be that. I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to, um, I want to get that. I want, I want the people to get that scripture. James 1 and 6 says, be, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave. Of no, I want to let uh, patience have his perfect word. Oh, yeah, okay. James 1 and 1. I'm going to paraphrase it while they get it. But it tells us that we got to let patience have its perfect this, work. Um, this James uh, is uh, James 1 and 3. Knowing he did the trying of your faith work in patience, but let patience have a perfect work Amen. that you may be perfect and entire to go to death. And that's James 1 and 4. James 1 and 4. Let patience have its perfect work in you. Because God is saying, when the time is right, I'm going to make it, everything's going to line up. I was talking to somebody today, and they were talking about, we were just talking about how everything is lining up. The things that God had promised them. When it started out, it didn't look like. It was going to be what God said. But then all of a sudden, boom, 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 things start to line up. And that's how God do us. It may not, it may take years. It may seem like, man, why do I have to? 
Some people have to go through longer than others to get to what God said because, amen, he's slowly peeling the things back like an onion that you don't need to have connected to you. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I'm going to quit right there. I pray that I have said something that has blessed you. Amen. If you have been blessed by this, you can uh, share it. If you would like prayer, you can inbox me. Inbox us, Whole Man Ministries, um, Kimberly Mo. Um, and, and, you know, we will pray for you. But I want you guys to be encouraged going through the process. And know that you're not alone in the process. That God is with you. And if you'll listen, he will instruct you. Amen. And you will be very skillful. We're going to talk about next week about being skillful as you go through the process. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on today. I pray that something was said that blessed you. All of our contact information is on the screen if you would like to support, donate, or partner with us. Again, thank you for watching Whole Man Ministries Incorporated.